Hallelujah. Well, let's open. Father, we just thank you for these two services here in Cape Town, that the fire of God would fill this place, that each and every person here and watching abroad would be touched by the fire of God, and they would be mobilized to make an eternal difference outside the four walls of the church. We thank you, Father, that they receive an eternal mandate from heaven for their earthly assignment, and we're careful to give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. Holy Spirit, this is your service. Do whatever you want to do in these two services, and let South Africa never be the same again by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. This is a Holy Ghost service. This is an upper room. This is a place of empowerment by heaven. Can you say amen? Please help me welcome Jonathan Rubain and his band as they come to minister and praise and worship right now. Give them a great God bless you. Come on, somebody make some noise for Jesus. Lift it up, lift it up, lift it up, lift it up. Say for you, my lungs, and you're the year as here. And the year I cannot see in for that. Did anyone come expecting for a blessing from the Lord? Hallelujah, somebody shout hallelujah. Woo! Let's sing this song. It's an old song. It says, Blessed be the name of the Lord. He is worthy. Let's sing. He is worthy to be praised and adored. Everybody with your hands lifted up so so we lift up holy hands in one accord singing blessed singing blessed be the name oh blessed be the name oh blessed be the name everybody sing it with your loudest voice blessed be the name blessed be the name of the Lord. For he is worthy, he is worthy to, to be praised, praised and adored.
Rafa ima langsan yo kanu sepiki Afrikaans dun. I think that is why Dr. Rodney got me to do some Afrikaans. I say for my Jonathan, for a week and for that, you must for my son, God so for the Moses, God so for the deer, and you must for the doen. But we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that later. I for my Gefra, you know, do some stuff that I miss. You know, there's there's the there's the praise and worship that we do now. That's great, Jonathan. But give for me the good. Give me an A. Give me the A. Give for me the good. What I miss from the house, man. I say from pastor is right. Here we go, doctor. Here we go. He is a werkelijkheid. He is a werkelijkheid. Die is hier van God. He is a werkelijk. My soul says, my soul Oh, now, this year, this year, my God, I us, I us. Everybody sing it.
security? Where's the security? Is that security there? I want to know, can us pungster kerk gehou hierso? I just want to know, where's the off guard? Where's the off guard? Where, 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 where can the people koor dans? Waar kan die mense koor dans? Kan die mense koor dans? Kan hulle koor dans hiervoor? As, as, as jylle all right hierso? Kan ons, kan ons een beetje pak kaap sy pungster kerk gehou in Grand West vanaan? Van morgen as jylle reg! Vraag vir iemand langs aan jou, as jy reg, maak my los, maak my los! We're gonna have some Cape Town church today. Hey! Hij is die zomerman, zusje. Die zomerman, zusje. Hey, Jesus die Nazarender. Hij is die zomerman, zusje. Hij is die zomerman, zusje. Kom maar, kap staat die zomerman, zusje. Is hij er echt? Hier gaan we. Die zomer. Hij is die zomer, die zomer. Die zomer. Hij is die zomer. Jesus die Nazarender, Hij is die Tommer, die Tommer, die Tommer, Hij is die Tommer, daar zijn, daar zijn, daar zijn, daar zijn, daar zijn, Hij is die Tommer, Hij is die Tommer, die Tommer, die Tommer, Prijs de Heer, Hij, Halleluja. Hij is die Tommer, die Tommer. Jesus the Nazarene, Jesus the Nazarene, come start, come on, clap your hands up, one, two, three. God zorg voor die mosies, God zorg voor die dieren, God zorg voor die planten, God zal zorg, God zorg voor die mosies. Sparrow, as I can sow for the mosses. 
living and care for the animals. As we can show for the deer, sierderlijk, 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 hij zal zo ver. Are there any people who watch us on a, on a Sunday night, 6 o'clock, channel 145? In the gemeente wat koorkies kijk op een zonig aan, 6 o'clock, op channel 145. Now when I got to the, to the, to the, to the TV show, they said to me, Jonathan, it's not only Pentecostal people who watch us koorkies. It's the Anglican, Catholic, Moravian, uh, Old Apostolic, New Apostolic. Even Buddha Hamad next to your house, he also watches. Everybody watches. That is why we, we just signed a fourth season. Yeah. Who would have ever thought that this gospel yeah. would be on a commercial station every Sunday? En hier die ding wat ons weggegooi het met die naam Koorkies. Wie so gedink het dat die Heere sal dit vat. En sit het op commerciële TV. For the whole country until Namibia to see. As ons God nie groot nie. As ons God nie groot nie. En nou, nou sê hulle vir my. You know what? Amal kyk Koorkies. So jy moet nou songs sing wat amal kyk. Wat allemaal ken, jy kan nie net Afrikaans sing nie. Hulle vraag my, het jy stok? Ek sê, ek kom, ek is van geboorte van die kerk. Toe ek uit my ma kom, toe het ek drie keer geskree. Pinkster! 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 Al wat ek ken is kerk, 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 kerk. So hy sê, ja, I know songs that everyone knows. You know, in all churches, alive, alive, alive forevermore. My Jesus is alive, alive forevermore.
is gonna be all right. Everything is gonna be all right. As I am at Khlua, everything is gonna be all right. Doesn't matter where you find yourself, everything is gonna be all right. Doesn't matter your circumstances, everything is gonna be all right. Doesn't matter if you got the lawyer's letter, everything is gonna be all right. Doesn't matter if you got fired, everything. Somebody shout, everything. It's gonna be all right. still enjoying the presence of the Lord. Now with Dr. Rodney, it's, it's, it's a bit different. I've been to a lot of places and I've seen, I've seen everything. If I say everything, I've seen everything concerning ministry. But the thing about him is that he does nothing without the Holy Ghost. And I'm sure you came today because you know that whatever is going to happen here today is going to be moved by the Holy Spirit. We've done, we, we know how to do church. We know how to do everything. We know how to preach. We know how to lead service. We know how to testify. We know how to sing. But there's one thing that we should never miss. We know how to do programming, everything. We should never miss the move of the Spirit. Never. Never. And so that is why I'm excited when he, when he got me here. And it's been five years. The last time we were in, um, Apostle Josie still got me in Kenilworth. We still, did you remember the fire, fire in Kenilworth? And I was so excited when he got me, and he, because he's a, he's a Holy Ghost man. So, so right now, I just want you to lift your hands and forget about everything else. Forget about everyone else that's the person sitting next to you. Prepare yourself for what is about to happen in this place. The Holy Spirit is about to move in this place like never before. So prepare your hearts for the move of the Spirit. Let's lift our hands, lift our hands, lift our hands.
Tell him how much you love him. Tell him how big he is, how great he is. Tell him there's nobody like him. Come and lift it up, Cape Town. Come and don't, don't get quiet now. Don't get quiet now. Lift up your voices. Come on, this is it. This is it. This is where you tell him how amazing, how beautiful, how great, how good he is. Let's lift our voices in this place. Come and lift it up. Lift it up. Honor the Lord. Worship the Lord. Come and glorify the Lord in this place. Talk to the Lord. Sing, Lord, we love you. Just a bit softer with the music. Lord, we love you, Lord. Lord, we love you. personal say Lord I love you Lord I love you sing Lord I love you Lord, Lord I Come and give the Lord of the Lord a praise. No, come and give the Lord a praise. <laughs> Lift your hands above your heads and give the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the ears, the any last, the begin, the end, the Alpha, the Omega, the Sudruas from Saron, the Blanc Morister. Yeah, give the Lord, the Lord, the Lord a praise. Lift it up for 10 more seconds. Lift it up, lift it up. Nine more seconds. Lift it up. Eight more seconds. Seven seconds. Five seconds. Four seconds. Three, two. Now somebody shout, Jesus! song to the Lord. I will sing of the goodness. Come and Cape Town, just you. Sing.
every breath. Lord, I will sing, I will sing of the goodness. Turn around, to turn around, just one of you. Turn around, one person, turn around. One person, turn around, one of you. Just one. Show their backs to you. No? So you turn around, ma'am. You turn around to him, to him. You ready? Tell that person something is running after you. Ah, yellow word, many. Tell a person, I see something running after you. I see the letter G. I see the letter O. I see another O. I see the letter D. I see the letter N. I see an E. I see an S. And I see another S. Say to someone, the goodness the goodness, the goodness, oh, is running out. Is running the goodness of the Lord. Are there any people who's great? 
the goodness and the favor and the mercy and the love of the Lord. It's Tell five people it wasn't you. No, 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 it wasn't you. It was the goodness of the Lord. Come on, somebody. Come on, it wasn't you. You were never qualified. It was the favor of the Lord. Come on, tell, tell somebody it wasn't you. It was because He loves you so much that He gives you His goodness. He loves you so much that He gives you His faithfulness. He loves you so much that He gives you His faith. He's a way maker. Father, we thank you once again for this great service tonight. Today and tonight, two services here in Cape Town. Night 196 of our 300 city one night Holy Ghost and Fire tour. Holy Ghost, once again, this is your service. Do whatever you want to do. Touch the hungry hearts. Let them be filled up to overflowing and let them pour out on a lost and dying world. We thank you, Father, that Cape Town, South Africa, will never be the same again. And we're careful to give you all the honor, you all the praise, and you all the glory. If you believe it, give the Lord the greatest shout of victory in this place. Hallelujah. If I was in Cape Town, I'd go, woo! You may be seated just a moment. Hallelujah. I'll tell you, just before Dr. Rodney... Howard Brown comes. We've got a couple announcements. Then we have our band. We have Pastors Raymond Saliers and Octavia is going to come up and minister. And then, hallelujah, we want to thank Jonathan Rubain and the band, and they'll be back a little later today. Didn't they do a great job? These guys are awesome. They're worshipers. And I'd like to tell you, we're on what's called One Night Holy Ghost and Fire meetings around the world, and we're doing 300 of them. And in Cape Town is city number 196 of 300. So I heard that out of all the cities we've ever done, city 196 was the one to be in. That's what I heard. I mean, I don't know if it's true, but I think it is. So of course, city 196 is, is uh, Cape Town. And of course, we didn't even know this meeting was planned until about two weeks ago. That's the way a Holy Ghost does it. Amen. That's why you're here. So just a couple quick announcements. We of course want to thank Pastors Kyle and Melissa Driver with River Church and all the helps ministry. They did a great job organizing right here, Pastor Kyle. And I know there's other pastors. We're going to recognize them in a minute. But the easiest thing you'll ever do is show up to a meeting. 
when other people have worked so hard to organize, and there's always the helps, the, the gifts of administration and helps, people that sacrifice and serve the Lord and put the time in to greet you, to seat you, audio, video, helps and everything. I think it's only right that we need to give everyone that's taken their time to help this be possible in the helps ministry a great God bless you. Give them a great God bless you because one sows, one reaps, and together we rejoice in the harvest. Amen? So thank you, Pastor Kyle. I also want to welcome all the other full-time ministers. If you are in the full-time ministry, if you don't mind, to please stand. If you're in full-time ministry, please stand. Full-time ministry. Can we give all the great men and women of God a great God bless you? Thank you for coming out. Your blood is in the soil. We're here to lift your hands up honor you pastors leaders thank you for coming out on this friday morning hallelujah that's a great turnout that's awesome just have a couple quick announcements please don't lay hands on anybody we believe in the laying on of hands we just don't know where your hands have been so uh just work with us on that we don't know everybody so let dr rodney do what he does and flow in the holy ghost and then if you have a camera if you don't mind you know we're actually live around the world on dr rodney we're on satellite we go to over one billion people. So Cape Town's going to one billion people right now. So uh, awesome. So, and uh, so what does that mean? Just, you know, you'll be able to go back to Rodney Howard Brown YouTube channel, watch everything, share it and everything. So instead of taking pictures and trying to record the whole service, look up because God has something for you, amen? So please, if you don't mind, silence your phone or turn it off. We would appreciate that. And uh, our ministry, by the grace of God, uh, our ministry website is revival.com. We have seen over 44 million decisions for Christ, 44 million. So why do I bring that up? Revival.com has a lot of phenomenal resources for you. You can always follow the ministry. Dr. Uh, Rodney Howard Brown YouTube channel, social media, they'll put that slide up right now. We even have soul winning tools that are all free, nothing is charged in 50 languages, in Afrikaans, and many in Zulu, and many other languages that are here. We have, we have it in local languages and in languages around the world. So that's revival.com forward slash soul winning tools. All those are available. And then our world headquarters is in Tampa, Florida. And we have six big meetings a year if you can ever come. And I've recognized many people that have been there before. But if you can make it over to Tampa, we have two big, uh, we have a camp meeting, winter camp meeting in January, the last week of January and the last week of July, winter and summer camp meeting as we call it. But two camp meetings, a little different here, but the end of January, end of July. Then we have ministers and leaders conference the last week of May and the last week of October. So those are four big meetings. Then we have a women's covenant conference with Dr. Adonica Howard Brown, which is actually next week, which is in March. And then a men's conference with Dr. Rodney is the end of September, right at the 1st of October. Someone said, I can't remember all that. Revival.com. How do you spell relief? R-E-V-I-V-A-L, revival. Just put a .com on it. Okay, so revival.com. And you could check everything out. And then also we have a school of healing for incurable diseases. People come from all over the world. Two-week intense healing school. Many miracles are taking place. All this is free, of course. You have to pave your way to get there in your accommodations. But all this stuff, all of our conferences are always free. And you can get there. Also, we have the River University, River Churches around the world, but many other churches too. So River University, uh, one year, two years, three years. And then we have the River School of the Bible. We even have an online curriculum called uh, River School of the Bible, which is revival.com forward slash RSB. And you can go to Bible College and, and uh, you know, do self-paced curriculum right there. And then also, just before I tell you a little bit about product, we didn't bring any product with us uh, to sell, but we'll tell you how to get it. I want to talk about the uh, different cities that we've just been on. We're on what's called the Africa Tour right now. And uh, we started off in Accra, Ghana. Accra, Ghana. So we were just in Accra, Ghana. We did six services. And if they put the slide up, I don't see if, I don't know if it's up, but we, uh, in just those six services in three days, we had 26,285 in attendance. We had 2,125 at the altar. And we mobilized 5,604 people to win souls. That's people that got trained actually got trained to win souls and said that they would at least share the gospel with one person a day and make disciples. So the compound interest, as Dr. Rodney will talk about, is huge. Then we went off to Vinduk in Namibia. We did three meetings in Vinduk in Namibia, and we had in attendance 3,370. Altar was 4,646. Mobilized 
being trained to win souls and take the power of God outside the church, 2,858. So the grand total up to today, just in the Africa tour from, uh, from Ghana and Namibia, was over 29,000 in attendance, over 4,600 decisions for Christ, and over 8,462 mobilized. Amen, for the grace of God. Hallelujah. But I heard that's going to happen in Cape Town. The fire of God's going to fall. People are going to be mobilized. And I do want to say this about tonight. You know, we are live on many, many, many different platforms, Revival.com, RevivalTV.com, because I know we could only do two meetings here, and we had to work it out to where you'd have to pick one because of in 48 hours, 72 hours from the time we started, the night was already full. A lot of hungry people, amen? So someone says, "How? what about tonight? Well, Revival.com, RevivalTV.com, Rodney Howard Brown YouTube channel. Who follows Dr. Rodney on Instagram? Uh, Instagram, if you are on Instagram, you can turn your phone on. It's Rodney Howard Brown with no space. Rodney Howard Brown, you can follow him on Instagram and all the social media platforms. Who watches him on TV? Who sees Dr. Rodney on television? Awesome. Who's been able to watch The Stand? We just crossed a 1,000. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Well, he'll be talking about all these things. Just the last thing before we go into praise and worship is we have product. We, we didn't bring any with us, but if you go to revival.com, many video and audio downloadables, all the things that you can get are, are downloadable at, at revival.com. Also on Audible, there's many things, many different platforms, but mainly revival.com. So when you go to revival.com, you can check out the pro products. We have a new book on kingdom business. We have a book on the anointing, but we have Dr. Rodney Howard Brown right here. So, hey, um, first of all, I want to tell you how much we love you. We're so happy to be here this morning in Cape Town. I'm as surprised as what you are, but I want you to tell them about the gift. We're going to give everybody a special gift. And if, when you registered, how many put your email down? Okay, so then you're going to receive an email from us. Tell them what I'm giving away to everybody that attends today. Tell them. Yeah, we have a book, Seeing Jesus as He Really Is, which is a great book that Dr. Rodney did on seeing Jesus as He Really Is. And then we have another book that he did, The Curse is Not Greater Than the Blessing. The Curse is Not Greater Than the Blessing. And, uh, and then we have um, the Kingdom Business book. I'm not... Yeah, no. Don't you have a list of everything? I, I do. I need to pull yeah, it up pull on it my up phone. Quickly. Okay. No, because <laughs> no, I'm gonna overload you on a bunch of stuff. So read read out what I'm giving away here because I want to bless everybody. I told Pastor Eric, I'm gonna bless everybody. You know, we, we sell product, but if I ran my ministry over what we sold, we'd be bankrupt. On some bankrupt beers. Uh, I give away more product than any other ministry on the planet. I just have always done that. So people say, well, then how do you get the money? I said, we pray. It's kind of a novel idea to pray. And then, and there's some ministries that only way they fund themselves is off their product. We don't. We just give it away. Have you found the list? I'm almost there. I found, there okay. we go. There so, it is right there. So oh, that's, that's too much. No, that's a lot. Okay, so these are electronic books, so you have to, you can put them in the read and stuff, but they will come to your email, and you just have to check your spam folder in case it goes there. But everyone that registers, and you registered today, will get this in your email from a letter from me, thanking you for coming at such a short notice. Seeing Jesus as he really is, what happens when Jesus shows up? This present glory, God's top ten, the reality of life after death, and then another book on Jesus, which is the... Um, um, 25th anniversary edition, Sowing and Famine, the School of the Spirit, Manifest in the Holy Ghost, What Gifts Do You Bring the King, and then some, <clears throat> some other books that I've written all about governmental things, but there's a book called Kingdom Business, just come out fresh oil from heaven, how to increase and release the anointing, the coming revival, what gifts do you bring the king, and then um, the anointing mini book, The Touch of God, the first book I wrote on the anointing, The Curse is Not Greater Than the Blessing, The Gifts of the Holy Spirit, the coat my father gave me. I mean, I don't know. This, if you bought this, it, the dollar amount is hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. But I wanted to bless everybody here today. And uh, so you'll be getting that from us. We want to tell you we love you so much. 
Do you have anything else you want to say? Well, why don't you welcome Ray and Octavia all the way from the River Church. And the music that's behind us is our whole band that's been playing all the days at the stand. Last night was 1,000 nights. And I was supposed to be there, but I said, no, Echan Kapstadt too. Amen. Pastor Ray, Octavia. Good morning, good morning, come on, stand. Fire, fire, fall on us. This is a revival. Fire, fall on us. Fire, fire, fall on us. This is a revival. Fire, fall on us. Like you did on the day of Pentecost, rushing in like a mighty wind. Fill us up with your presence and your power, Lord, do it again. We are here crying out in one accord. Let the heavens touch the earth. Come and light a passion in our hearts. And Lord, let it burn. Come on, sing with us. This is a revival, fire, fall on us. Overwhelmed by your glory and your grace, you consume us with your love. Give us more and more of who you are. We can't get enough. This is a revival, fire, fall on us, fire, 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 fall on us. This is a revival, fire, fall on us. You're the only one who can bring new life. Put your hands together. This is a revival. Put your hands together this morning. Just like you did it before, but Lord, we, Lord, we are ready for. More. Just like you did it, just oh, like you yeah, did it yeah. before, Lord, we, 
Lord, we are ready for more. Oh, just like, just like you did it before. Oh, Lord, we, Lord, we are ready oh, for more. Just like you did on the just day like of Pentecost. Did it before. Oh, Lord, we, Lord, we are ready for oh, more. Lord, we, Lord, we are ready for more. Lord, we are ready. Lord, yeah. we are ready for oh, more. Lord, we, Lord, we are ready oh, for Lord, more. We Lord, we are ready for more. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I'm so grateful for the Holy Ghost and fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got the Holy Ghost. I've got the Holy Ghost and fire. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me. The Holy Ghost and fire. I've got the Holy Ghost. I've got the Holy Ghost. So glad that I've got him. I've got the Holy Ghost and oh, fire. Fill me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with the Holy Ghost and fire. I've got the Holy Ghost. I've got the Holy Ghost. I've got the Holy Ghost and fire. I've got the Holy Ghost and fire. Fill me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. you to be, give Jesus the biggest shot of praise in the house this morning. Come on, Cape Town can do better than that. Give Jesus the biggest shout of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's lift our hands unto the King of Kings this morning. We worship you, Jesus. You're wonderful, Lord. You're worthy, Jesus. There's no one like you. the glory of the Lord. Here comes the glory of the Lord, sweeping in the room. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Sing that with us. Here comes the glory. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Streaming in the room. Here comes the glory of the Lord. the glory of the Lord sleeping in the room. Heaven is on the move. Jesus is on the throne. Though the nations wait.
Just tell him how much you love him this morning. We worship you. We love you, Jesus. There's no one like you. Everybody sing it now. Anointing. Let it fall. Fall on me. Anointing fall. Anointing. Fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing. Touch 
my hands, my mouth and my heart. Feel my cup, Lord, every part. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Sing anoint, anoint. Let it fall on me. Sweet anoint, anoint. Fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall on me. Touch my hands, my mouth and my Just lift those hands to heaven right now. Father, we thank you for all that have come here on this Friday morning for this unexpected service. We had no intention, as you know, Lord, but you had intentions. So we find ourselves here with this precious group of people here in the beautiful city of Cape Town. And Father, in the time that we have that is limited, that you would do what you need to do, Holy Spirit, that you would come and breathe upon every person here under the sound of my voice. Not only breathe upon them, but touch them. Let the fire of God fall on each and every person. Let fresh oil be poured upon them. Let the new wine of heaven be poured out. Let the river of God run through this place. Let the wind of heaven blow. Cause the effect of this morning service to have far-reaching results, even unto eternity, we pray. We see the whole of the Western Cape shaken by your mighty hand, and even region beyond, and nations will be touched, even out of what's taking place. Touch all those that are watching on the streams and then by satellite around the world. Holy Spirit, do whatever you want to do here. Thank you, Lord. Set every heart ablaze. And then give them that assignment that you have for them. For there are some that are looking for a heaven's assignment. And I pray that today they shall be plugged into heaven's assignment and they shall run. And they shall do heaven's purpose and heaven's plan that there shall be a mobilization of thousands of people here this morning that shall be mobilized for the end time purposes of heaven. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for sparing us these number of years. And Father, I pray that even miracles will take place and healings will take place this morning. Even the reversal of the effects of medicine shall be reversed in this room here today in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. And Father, we come in with you in advance to give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor, for you alone are worthy to receive all glory and all honor and all praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord the biggest shout of praise. No, you can do better than that, Cape Town. Come on. 
Hallelujah. I want you to greet two or three people. Just tell them you love them. Jesus loves them. And then you may be seated. It would be great if I can get some lights on the people. I'd really like to see people. I don't do well working nightclubs. Amen. <laughs> what a joy it is to be here, I tell you. And uh, somebody said, we didn't know you were coming. I didn't know we were coming. And it really all started because of Ghana. I received a call from a pastor there, um, Joshua. Hewitt Mills, his father's dad, Hewitt. Yeah. Are you part of their church here in Cape Town? Well, God bless you. And so he, he said to me, he said, now, listen, this is not my father inviting you. This is me inviting you. Would you come to my church? He said, I'm a young man. I think he's, what, 32. He said, he said would you come? I said, is the Pope Catholic? It's, it's my way of joking. I said, of course, I'll come. Maybe it's not What's he? Maybe he's 40. I don't know, but he's a young man. And um, he didn't know how old I was because they've all been watching, and even his dad was watching me back in the 90s. So I think they all thought I was like 75 years old, you know. And uh, it's quite funny when I travel now, people realize I'm a young person. Yeah, I'm only 61. I've just been doing this for a long time, 43 years now. And uh, so anyway, he said, would you come to the... I said, look, 23 is out. I said, we'd probably get to you in 24, 25. He said, no, no, please, please, would you pray about it? I said, look, I'll pray, but I don't know right now. I'm not going anywhere. I, have not, I had not missed a Sunday at the river in three years. I never missed one Sunday. And, you know, with the stand, which is very important, because we actually, it's not a revival service. It's really a stand. We're standing against the tyranny we refuse to bow knee, and we don't bow to any other potentate or king. We bow to one king, and his name is Jesus. So if you realize, I got arrested three years ago because I wouldn't shut the church down. And uh, everybody was embarrassed. I wasn't. I was very happy. I was obeying Jesus, doing what he said for me to do. Can you say amen? And, uh, but anyway, let me leave that alone for now. I'll just make mention that. So he said, please come. So I said, look, I'll pray about it. Maybe September, maybe September. So he got to watching the stand and he saw the New Year's Eve service and he called me. He said, you have to come. You've got to come in January. I said, I can't. I've got my camp meeting and I'm dedicating our new sanctuary. We've redone our sanctuary and I'm dedicating that. And I'm probably going to go a month because I want to dedicate it properly. Our meetings are two meetings a day, six days a week. That's what we've done for years. And I want to dedicate this place. Uh, you know, I'm not bringing in guest speakers. It's just going to be me, my band, my preach, my staff, and the Holy Ghost. And we're going to dedicate this place the way it's supposed to be dedicated with the move of the Spirit of God. You know, I've got all these new students, and we have 500 kids in our university, and they're going to experience what many have experienced, but they weren't even born when I started in the revival, you know. And so I said, I'm, I'm going to go probably four weeks. And then he said, well, can you come? Uh, the, you know, at the end, I said, okay, let's pray. So I prayed. I said, I'll come the 3rd, 4th, and 5th of March. But I'm flying in. We come private. I'm flying back out. I'm leaving Monday. I'm going back home. And then, so anyway, then I get a call from Namibia. Uh, Pastor Goro, he said, no, no, you can't come to Ghana and you don't come to Namibia. That's not going to happen. There's no ways that you can be four and a half hours north of us and you don't come to Namibia. You come into Bintuk. So he, um, I said, okay, I'll come down for a night and whatever. And uh, I had been talking to Pastor Josh McCauley and Pastor Ray McCauley, and Pastor Ray, you know, his, his, his health is failing him, and I wanted to see him before he goes home to be with the Lord. So I called Pastor Ray, and I said, Pastor Ray, I'm going to just bring Adonica, because he married Adonica and I years ago. I said, I'm just going to come, just give you a hug. He said, no, you're not. You're preaching for me. I said, oh, God. Okay, now, so... I'm preaching for them next Sunday at, 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 at well, this Sunday at, at, at Raymond North. So, but I felt, okay, if I'm going to hit Joburg, then I'm coming to Cape Town. It comes up to. And so, I, I, was, I was sitting at 2 o'clock in the morning, and I, I thought, I'm going to the Grand West. Because last time we were on a field, if you remember. Who was with me on the field? Okay, so we were on the field breaking a drought. 
And I said, no, no, listen, we're going to go to the Grand West. I got a hold of Pastor Carl. I said, give me the Grand West Friday night. And we announced it four days later, the whole place was packed out. So he said, what are we going to do? I said, do a morning service. And, you know, so apparently Cape Town, Cape Townians don't like morning services. I don't think so. I don't remember looking up. It looks like a bunch of people like a morning service, you know. So I said, we just back in a bliss, just have a blowout. And he said, I wish you'd give me a little bit more time. I said, I didn't know. I had no clue. I, I'm as surprised as anybody else. So if you thought we planned this month ahead, we did not. It was like two weeks. Namibia was six days of planning. And God did amazing things. So I've really been just so blessed and really humbled. Um, when I was, I'll go back to the Ghana meetings. When I was in Ghana, all the bishops came to see me. They're all in their 70s. And they came and surrounded me and said, they said, man, we thought you were our age. You know? <laughs> but they said, thank you for staying true to Pentecost. Thank you for not backing off the move of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for not backing off of the gifts and tongues. And so it was a great encouragement for me, you know, because you don't realize when you travel like I do, you don't realize how many people actually touch. And then the power of God hit. In Ghana, their bodies were lying out all over the property, three, four, five in the morning. They passed the call me and said, they don't know how to close the church. Their bodies still out on the power. I said, we'll just leave them there for the Sunday service. And people were falling out on the, under the anointing on the streets. It was, it was, it was crazy. I mean, I slept very little, probably one to two hours a night the last six, seven days. So it's, it's, been, it's been a whirlwind. And um, my wife will be here shortly. We're working on a lot of stuff. She's got a ladies' conference. There's nearly 4,000 ladies registered coming in. She's editing books. I've got two. I have a book coming out on revival that's going to be out. She's got a book coming out on, on the virtuous woman. So Donica does amazing stuff. She'll be here shortly. But I want to play you a highlight clip from what happened in the 12 days right here, fire on the Cape, just to bring back some memories. And it, it's awesome what, what God does and what God has been doing and the drought that broke here in the city of Cape Town. And I heard that this time you're dealing with power shortages. So last time I had to come help you here because there was a water shortage. So we had to come bring the water of heaven. Now, I said, okay, ons bring the kracht van die Heilige Geest. And there's not going to be a power shortage in Cape Town. Can you say amen? What's, I've got to come and help with the shortage here. Water and now power. Amen. So let's roll the clip. Yeah. 
Now, um, that meeting was 23 days from nothing to doing that one. And most churches were not wanting to work with us because they said it's the wrong time of the year. You know what? I'm going to say this to the pastors. If you're going to sit and you've got your whole year planned out, you're going to miss out on what God wants to do. There's a thing called the spontaneity of the Holy Ghost. And you have to follow the Holy Ghost. If God wants something done, forget your committees and forget your whatever and throw it back and let God do what he wants to do. Our whole ministry is about spontaneity. And when we do the 300 city tours, I only give a two weeks notice. Somebody said, why? So the devil doesn't have a chance to plan for what he wants to do. Listen, the devil didn't know I was coming here three weeks ago. Because I didn't know I was coming here three weeks ago. The devil will find out tomorrow we were here. But then it's too late. It's too late. So, you know, you just said, well, we can't do this. Listen, everything that God's done in our ministry has been like that. Somebody said, but the Lord can tell you ahead and you can plan. We do that with the church. But you have to be open to the spontaneity of the Spirit of God. If the Lord says, I want you to go somewhere, then you go somewhere. You drop everything and you do exactly what he tells you to do. Because we don't work for us. We work for him. Are you with me? Uh, they tell me that we have an edited version of what happened in Ghana. Let's show you what took place in Accra. Show this. It's too short. How many know Jesus is coming very soon? How many know that? It's coming very soon. And so the work must be done. And you say this mountain and it's going to take men and women full of the fire of God to get the job done. And you say this change will you know, one touch from the Lord and everything changes. Just but one they touch. Don't know you like Just me. one touch from Jesus. There is power Just one touch. and I couldn't stop laughing and I was lying down and I was like why am I still laughing and I was trying to stop and I couldn't stop so it was just I don't know I believe that God has touched me when I woke up I felt happy I felt lighter this morning I felt lighter this morning I felt lighter I felt lighter so much What's happening, brother? What's happening? <laughs> Tell the people what's happening. It, it's, it's, nobody's pointing to it. Out of your enemy, the flood for the rivers. <laughs> And that fire will come and burn out all the fear. The fire will burn out all the dross. The fire will burn out everything that will hold you back. And for the first time, I mean, I become so tired in the night. But last night, I prayed by the number of the first time. And that happened for the first time. My wife can testify to that. I was even sleeping and praying at the same time. And, and, and it's been so amazing. Very fantastic. I mean, what more is going to He's not drunk as you suppose. He's just very full of the Holy Ghost. That's what happened on the day of Pentecost. What she doesn't know is she was laughing in her sleep last night. <laughs> Well, yesterday I was looking at everyone, and I just thought, I mean, I, I was more in, intent on hearing what you had to say, I thought that God wanted to speak to me. Just so touched by the power of God, and I really believe our church will never be the same again. And it's real. It's real. It's either real or it's not real. It's real.
Yeah, we, we don't have a Namibian clip. We will be putting one together. But you know what's so crazy? So we go to Vinchuk, and over 2,000 people packed the place. 1,800 the altar, and then 1,900 people commit to win souls. So people don't really understand what we're actually doing because we're working off a of compound interest. If you've got 1,970 people and each person tells one person about Jesus over the next 365 days, you can work it out. So I'm doing it right now in a quick calculation. Times 365, 719,000 people will hear about Jesus just from that one night service. The population of Namibia is what, three, three million people? That means in three years it's possible to see that whole place saved. If people are full of the fire of God, if you're full of religion, they're not gonna, no one's going to come to know Jesus because they don't want religion. What was interesting, after the one night, uh, then we went into the township and um, 1,000 people packed that place, 660 in the altar, 880 committed to win souls. And, uh, you know, after the service, I'm sitting talking to a pastor who's just moved there from South Africa, and he says, oh, we need to pray for revival in Namibia. I looked at him like this. I, I said, what do you think is just happening here? He said, no, the people are not hungry. I, I looked at him. I said, the problem is not with the Namibian people, my friend. The problem is with you. It's not with the Namibian people. When you are a minister and you look like death, are you with me? Then there's a big problem, a great problem. When you look like you're constipated, dan moet jy enema kry om vry te wees. Don't tell me the people are not hungry. Around the world, they are hungry. People are hungry. They're hungry for God. They're hungry for the power of the Holy Spirit. They are hungry. Someone said, we're praying for revival. You know what? A lot of excuses to pray for revival because they're never going to have it. So if we keep praying for it, we'll just wonder when it's going to happen. You get revival. You get the fire. You've got to ask God, Lord, put me on fire. Make, set me ablaze. And stop moaning about the people. Nothing wrong with the people. Something wrong with you. Amen. People come to Tampa. They want all my people. I said, you have people. No, we don't have people like this. I said, you preach them like they are. You let Marco do it. You preach them dead. <laughs> Somebody said, you sound like you're picking on some leadership. Yes, we, yes, yes. Because I'm tired of hearing excuses why God's not moving. God is moving. This is the greatest hour to be alive right now. God is moving by His Spirit. Somebody said, well, our denomination won't let us. Then that's your problem then. <laughs> Somebody said, our leadership won't let us. What are you talking about? Are you under the leadership of the Holy Spirit or are you under the leadership of man? So are we looking for, I'm actually, this sounds crazy, I'm really looking for 120 people here this morning that will catch fire. If 120 of you catch fire, then this is all worth it. Because on the day of Pentecost, there was only 120 people. And, and, and that's, we still shaken from what happened with that first 120. Somebody said, but there's more than 120. I, do, I know, but I don't know how many of you are gonna catch fire here this morning. Oh, there's, there's about 120 hands just raised. And they're all back. They're not in the section here. Huh? Nobody raised their hand in the section here. They're all further back. So maybe I must walk off the platform and come back to where the hands are raised. You know what's been so amazing? The kings and the queens, the paramount chiefs and the chiefs are coming to all the services. 
and I work with Overland Mission. We just had the largest gathering of kings and monarchs in the history of Africa. 380 kings flew into Lusaka. I was supposed to be there. I paid for it. I, I said, I can't be there, but I'll help you with it. And we have now, we've got chaplains in 380 palaces across Africa. God is doing something. I'm telling you, if the pa if pastors are not going to work, if you're not going to grab a hold of the fire, God's going to bypass and he will go to the indigenous people. Tribes are being shaken. Africa is going to be shaken. God is moving by His Spirit in a powerful way. Can you say amen? But it's not just you get fire. You got to get some joy. You got. That's the Africa I know. You've got to get joy. You have to. You have to. There's a lot of oil here today. So you can get some oil. To some of you, I'm going to ask you to try to stay as dignified as you can for as long as you can. God forbid that joy should be sweeping the streets of Cape Town. I mean, people out there will think we're crazy. All right, so we were on this 300 city tour and then this stupid COVID. And so everything shut down. Well, in many ways, and I know this sounds terrible, <laughs> Praise the Lord. This pumps the Amen. So everything come to a grinding halt. But for us, for our ministry, it was really the greatest thing that ever happened. Everything exploded for the ministry. I don't know how, I don't know how to explain to you. And I want to just tell you, we have prayed over South Africa more than you can ever imagine. We have cried over the nation. We have sent huge resources here to many ministries across Southern Africa to help. And we've been praying for you, crying out for you on a daily basis. There wasn't one day I didn't pray for the nation of South Africa and lift up the people of South Africa because of what was taking place. And our stand in Tampa is for you. I said, as long as they're doing their nonsense and closing the church down, I'm going to stand here till Jesus comes. We will never shut down. We're going to stand for our brothers and sisters around the world that cannot stand. So we've come here with a big, a big package of oil here for you. If you don't want the oil, you better run now while you can. And I also brought, I'll tell you this, I, I, I don't want to say it too loud. I brought... I brought new wine with us. <laughs> this new wine, this new wine comes from the grapes that have been freshly squeezed. They come from the vineyard of heaven. One grape will carry you for the next three months. But please, if you drove here, be very careful when you leave here. You cannot drink and drive, okay? You'll have to call Uber. So what we prayed about, rather when we do the 300 city tours, I was just looking for upper room meetings, churches that see 500 or 1,000, and we just ran to the nations of the earth and ignite people for the harvest. And you'll see when you see the totals at the end, how many people have promised, Lord, as long as you give me strength in my body and air in my lungs, I'm gonna tell one person about Jesus every day from now till the time you come to take me home. Who thinks that you here can tell one person about Jesus every day? Wave your hand at me, wave your hand at me. I'll tell you, and today we're gonna to put the tools in your hand. If you'll do what we tell you, God's going to use you. 
Cape Town's going to be shaken. Region beyond is going to be shaken. Your whole church is going to be shaken. The whole region around your church is going to be shaken. You know, last week in Tampa, Florida, our team and members led over 6,100 people to the Lord. And that wasn't a special week of outreach. That's just everybody doing what they do on a daily basis. And so you can create an engine room in your ministries, in your churches, and even in your businesses. How many people are in business here? All those in business. Stan, I want to look at you. I want to look at all the people in business. You must make your business, attach it to eternity, and make it about souls, and watch what God's going to do with your company. Watch what God's going to do with your business. Your whole business is going to go to another level. When you make your business about the harvest and about souls, everything for us must be about souls. You say, why? Because Jesus is coming very, very soon. How many know that he's coming very soon? And I know there's people that don't believe in the coming of the Lord. They don't believe in the catching away of the church. They don't believe in the rapture anymore. That's fine. You can stay for the tribulation. No problem. But I'm going to be gone to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And I'll see you later. Amen. I'm on the first flight out. Praise God. Somebody said, we're in the tribulation now. No, we're not. Somebody said, we're in the millennium now. No, we're not. We're in the beginning of sorrows. According to Matthew chapter 24. But verse 14 says, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world. Then the end will come. That's where we are right now. We're in this gospel being preached in all the world, and then the end will come. So let me show you a clip of the 300 city tour, of what we've been doing. So if we roll that, please.
Now you can see at the end, I want to just get that total because I know they updated it with, uh, with um, Ghana and Namibia. Pastor Eric, how many were mobilized? I'm just looking at that. You sent it to me, okay. So mobilized, so okay, over the, the 195 cities, well, uh, what is this, 196 now? Okay, so uh, 168,000 in attendance, 54,000 in the altar call, and 85,870 mobilized. Now watch this. 85,870 mobilized, and you multiply that by 365, that's 31 million people saved every year. That's just if everybody tells one person about Jesus. So how long would it take me to get 31 million people saved? Our whole ministry till now, we're sitting at 44 million. But there's 8 billion people on the planet. So I know the Lord's told me, you can't do it all. You have to mobilize the pew. You have to mobilize the people. Everyone can reach one. Everyone can win souls. Every single person can lead somebody to Jesus. That's a mass crusade. <laughs> that's, a much, that's a bunch of mass crusades. 31 million. That's just if they lead one. If they lead two or three. Now, is everybody going to tell one person about Jesus every day? Probably not. But somebody's going to catch fire. Somebody out of that is going to be a mighty man or woman of God. Somebody out of that is going to, God's going to use them to shake a nation. And heaven has the true count. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, somebody said, well, I'm getting tired of all the numbers. You've got all these numbers. I said, well, they said, we're not in the book of numbers. We're in the book of Acts. I understand. But in the book of Acts, there was 120. Then there was 3,000. Then there was 5,000. So it's amazing how there were 12. And then there were, come on. So stop playing about numbers. Thank God for souls. And thank God for the harvest. And we're going to plunder hell and populate heaven. Can you say amen? And we're going to use every method of evangelism possible. We use lines to catch fish. We use lures to catch trout and bass and all these little delicate little fly things that you use. And then when you catch a marlin, you use a big hook. And then when all else fails, a stick of dynamite on the water and they all come to the top. So I use every method and I'll even use a stick of dynamite. Amen. Because we're going to catch souls. And I'll say this, you know, for some that don't know, but 20 years ago, I held my daughter in my arms, and she died on Christmas Day. She was 18 years old, and she suffered from 18 a long disease called cystic fibrosis. And I, and I held her on Christmas Day. I said to the Lord, today I give you my best gift, but I make a vow the devil will pay 100 million souls, 100 million souls, and a billion dollars into world missions, and I'm going to put 1,000 young ladies in the ministry. So it was a bad career move. Are you with me? Now, let me ask you a question. Who's ever had a tragedy come your way or something happened to you? Wave your hand at me. Then why don't you just join to what I'm doing and say, I'm going to make the devil pay. He'll rue the day he ever touched my family, my children, my husband, my wife, my grandchildren. It's going to cost him. Otherwise, you sit in a place where you just sulk and you do nothing and you, you whittle away to nothingness. If anybody could have done that, that Donnie and I could have, and she's here today, stand up, sweetheart. And this is my wife, 41 years. And we're so blessed to be reunited with our dear friend, Molly Kelly. I mean, what a blessing you are. She traveled with us in America for quite a while, and it was so good to see you. I haven't seen you in, what, 20 years? I don't know when last we saw you, but everybody always used to think you guys were sisters, you know? <laughs> Anyway, look at them there, sitting there. We love you so much. So God is good. Can you say amen? Yes. Say this off me. The Lord is good. Lord. And his mercy endures yes. forever. Yes. Say it again. Lord. One more time. Lord. Lord. Hallelujah. Now, Let's talk about my arrest. <laughs> I will be totally honest with you. I never planned to go to prison. It was never on the top 10 things I wanted to do before I left the earth. Get arrested. And I was in prison 
really not long. I was in probably the whole thing was, maybe I was in the cell for maybe 30 minutes. The whole time, probably 40 minutes. I was in prison. And I will tell you this, none of you came to visit me. <laughs> but what had happened was I knew about, I knew the plan to lock the planet down. And I knew that back in 2005. I knew in 2005 they were gonna lock everything down because of a pandemic. Somebody said, how did you know? Because I was given a package from the Department of Defense in the United States. And on the package was written, Pandemic Flu Preparedness Kit. Inside the package was two N95 respirators, four surgical masks, and hand sanitizer. On the back of the package it said, there is no pandemic yet. You'll be told when there is one. When you open it up, everything was laid out 15 days to slow the spread, wash your hands, stay in your house, and everything that all the nonsense of 2020. So I already knew that. I actually told our church about it in the conference in October in 2005. And you can even see when I'm, if I've got the clips, I'm not gonna play them today, but you can see it. I was much bigger than I am now. The Lord has helped me shrink a little bit. Amen. Because there was too, much, too many cook sisters and, and samosas. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so you can see when I was sharing it in 05 that I was hesitant because people, people look at you like you're crazy. I said, I said to everybody in October 05, what would happen if we were not able to meet? And of course, so I knew what was going to happen. So when they announced that we can lock everything down 15 days, I said, no, I'm not locking anything down. I said, we've got Walmart is open, the casinos are open, the abortion clinics are open, and, and all the bars are open. No, we are an essential service. We are the church, and I'm here to help people. We feed 1,000 families a week, and I'm not shutting the church down. I called our sheriff, and I said, sheriff, they're gonna shut the church down and I'm not shutting down. And I am in central service, which he agreed to the fact that I was. And I said, I need the ability to move around. He said, don't worry. And he made me an honorary, honorary deputy two weeks before they arrested me. It gave me badge. It gave a badge. It gave me badge. And, uh, but the pressure came on him, so obviously he had, and there were ministers that were with him and they turned me in, preachers, that turned me in, okay. So, anyway, I, I just want to say that to you. So I had, no, I had no fear, I wasn't afraid or anything, because I knew what God had told us to do. Um, God will always prepare his people you will always, the Holy Ghost is with you. He will always tell you what to do. If you ask him, somebody said, well, I asked three people and they told me, that's what's your problem. You asked the wrong people. Did you ask the Holy Ghost? When you ask the Holy Ghost, then he tells you what to do. And so I knew this thing was gonna come to a place where they would lock everything down and I had now I had the, the badge, and I could travel. Um, but as you know, it went, it went crazy. So, and people said, well, you didn't have to get arrested. They were wanting to make an example out of me, except it backfired, because I'm the kind of person, if you push me in a corner, it's not gonna be good. I was born on this soil. I was born on the soil. We don't roll over and play dead. Are you with me? We're not compromised, we're not compromising. We know what the Word of God says. 
The Bible says, don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together, even the much more when the day approaches. I'm not having a Zoom service. Somebody said, you can preach to your cars. I said, I'm not in the Disney movie cars. If you love Jesus, honk your horn, flash your lights, we'll do your windshield wipers. Niemann, I said, bliff. I'm not, it's really cars, <laughs> So I know some people look like a car. Somebody looks like a dump truck. Somebody looks like a smart car. I understand all that. Because my, I see things in cartoons. I can, make, I can make all of you into cars right now, just by looking around. Amen. We've got a one or two Teslas here. Well, you ran out of energy. You have no battery. We've got a couple of diesel trucks here. I'm going to ask the usher to bring me some jumper cables. There's, there's cars here run out of fuel. There's several people, their headlights don't work. There's some people that if you look under your chair right now, you've been leaking oil from the time you walked in here. Some of you came in here, you were blowing smoke out of the back end. I'm watching you. Other people, your windshield wipers are not even working. How many remember the day when you had to have a third party disc? Remember the third party disc? Some of you don't even have a third party disc. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm entertaining myself right now. Please forgive me, I'm having too much fun. <clears throat> Right. I'm going to pull this thing right here. Why's your third party disco? Huh? Anyway. So, um, some of you are illegally parked, and a couple of you, your meter has expired. Expired meter. <laughs> Please forgive me. I entertain myself, and that's how I've stayed. I've been able to stay sane 43 years of ministry this way. Um, two weeks before I got arrested, my whole life changed. I'd come home from a meeting on the East Coast of Florida, and I was actually using a helicopter because they were locking things down and even curfews and all that nonsense. So I used a helicopter and landed my house. I got home at one o'clock on the morning of the 17th, which was a Tuesday. The 17th of March was a Tuesday, 2020. I went upstairs, I took my Bible, my notebooks, I put them down on my desk. And my nights were short in those days, three hours a night, praying with people around the world, France, Italy, Germany, all over, from Australia to, when you've traveled now, 86 countries, you know a lot of people, and people are calling you. People are calling me, Pastor, we can't even go outside of a house, there are people standing with weapons, people running out of food. We were sending food to help people. We were, we were sending people money to get food. I mean, just, you can't believe what was taking place. And I was dealing with, not just one, people living here, you were dealing with your problems. I'm dealing with things in Australia, New Zealand, Canada, across Asia, from Ch Taiwan to Thailand to, Ch to China. We were getting people out of China. Listen, I was evacuating people. I evacuated, you don't even want to know what we were doing. And it was 18 hours a day, sometimes 20 hours a day. There was no time for anything. You can ask my staff, I didn't go anywhere. I was totally focused on the task at hand because people are calling you, we're praying for them, but you can't just pray or we just pray, you have to help. Are you with me? So I get into the bedroom just after two o'clock. Adonica is sitting on the other side of the room, she's working, and I get into bed and we have a four poster bed and instead of lying down and just going to sleep, which many nights I put my head on the pillow, I'm gone in 20 seconds. I mean, she'll be talking to me 
and we're halfway through a sentence and I'm sleeping because I'm that tired. And so I get into bed and I don't lie down. I prop myself up and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, why are you doing this? Lie down. I had my phone in my left hand and an evangelist friend of mine was calling from Australia and tried to call me earlier. And he called four times and he never called. So I knew this was desperate. And so I could see his number, it came up as red and I hate red numbers on my phone. I got to answer it, you know. That's just how I try to take, I try to answer everybody, talk to everybody. I try to be there available. And so I thought, okay, I'm gonna call him now because the time change between Tampa and Melbourne we will keep missing each other. So I press redial, and I'm holding my phone like this in my hand. I press redial, and I've got my phone like that. I'm sitting there, and I said, I put it on speaker. Donica's sitting on the other side. She's working. This is now just 10 minutes past 2 o'clock in the morning. And he answered the phone. I said, hey, how's it going? He said, not good. I said, what are you talking about? He said, the stores are empty. It looks like the end of days. And as he said that, there was a flash of light. And around the four-poster bed came a tornado of fire. It was about this big. It wasn't 10 foot tall. If it had been 10 foot tall, I would have died. This fire, which I recognized as the fire that touched me in July of 1979, when God first anointed me for ministry, when that fire came upon me, This was the same fire that I felt that fell in 1989 when revival broke out across America. It's the same fire that I felt in all the services. It's the same fire I feel here this morning. The exact same fire. But for the first time, I saw it. I saw it. Now, there's a lot of people, they always see everything, and I don't think they see much. I think they make it up, and they do all kinds of stuff. But... No, because, because there's no transformation within themselves. These are holy things. Are you with me? You can't say you saw an angel and you still look like you do. It's impossible. You can't say, no, no. You can't say you saw Jesus and you look like a wreck. It's impossible. One glimpse in his face and everything changes. Everything changes. Everything. Everything changes. It's impossible. It's impossible to look into his eyes for two seconds and be normal. He has eyes as flames of fire. Jesus! So, this fire comes around and it starts to come towards me. My head is saying, this is not happening. You are in a dream right now. This is not real. But I'm looking, there's the phone. I can hear his voice. I see his name. I see the time, 10 minutes past two. There's a Donica on the other side of the room. I know this is not a dream. I know this is very real. And then the fire crossed over. And as it crossed over my feet, my whole body began to shake uncontrollably. And I began to weep. And I couldn't breathe. I was doing this. <laughs> I couldn't breathe because the, pr- the power took my breath away. The, the, the presence of this fire was so holy and it was majestic. And I was in the presence of the greatest royalty I'd ever felt in my life. And the holiness was so pure and it took my breath away. I couldn't, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't even, it actually took me months and months. It's really taken me years to even articulate. There were many nights I left the church in Tampa and apologized to the congregation because I said, I've taken three, four hours trying to tell you what happened to me, and I have no words in the English language to describe what's happening. I, it's greater than anything you can ever imagine, the glory of God. That's why none of you should be afraid to die. Not one person here should be afraid to die because you go straight into the glory of God. You, you should never be afraid to die. You, we're gonna, you're going to live your life. Let me just say this to you. You will live your life until you finish, and then you go home to be with Jesus. There is no believer that left and went to heaven that's walking around sulking in heaven with his head down. Oh, uh, I shouldn't be here right now. Somebody who's feeding my dog. I mean, come on. And, you know, what a... Come on, people. It's glory. It's glory. There, there's a heaven to gain, and there's a hell to shun. Why do everybody look at death as the finish? It's not. It's just leaving of your body. But the day is coming when that trump will sound and the dead in Christ will rise and we which are alive and remain will be caught up together with him in the clouds. This corruptible will put on incorruptible. This mortality will put on immortality. We'll be changed. We're going to be with him forever and ever. Are you with me? There's going to be a meeting in the air. 
in the sweet, sweet by and by. And oh, I want you to meet you there in that home beyond the sky. Such singing you'll hear, never heard by mortal ear, will be glorious, I do declare. And God's own son will be the leading one in that meeting in the air. Remember that old song? Amen. So this fire is coming towards me. Now my brain, three things. My spirit is in total peace. Because I, it was Jesus. It was the whole, it was, it was heaven. My head is still doing backward somersaults. This is not happening. This is not real. This is not your head. Your head, clop it. You just got to clop it. And my body was shaking uncontrollably. But as the fire crossed over me, I just knew certain things. I just knew it. It was like you were sitting in a Bible school and we were being downloaded. All of this happened in about 90 seconds. I wish I could tell you it was three hours and the Lord sat there in the chair and talked to me. It wasn't. I thought I, thought I was going to die. I thought, tonight I'm going home to be with Jesus, you know. I mean, this is it. Because it was just too overwhelming. That's why we're going to have to have a glorified body. Because otherwise you get to heaven, you won't even be able to stand up. Angels will have to carry you, show you, have a look at you. Uh, because uh, your physical body can't take too much. That's why people fall under the power. Because the anointing, when the natural comes into contact with the supernatural, something's going to give way. Today in the service, the fire of God is going to hit some people. I'm telling you, you are never going to be the same again. I'm talking about in this service here this morning. You, you might not realize you're being set up right now. There are angels walking all these aisles right now. They're getting everything rigged. And there's going to be a suddenly here in this service here. For me. So... The fire, and I tell people this, at 10 past two in the morning, if fire comes in your room, it's either very good news or very bad news. Thank God it was good news, because I'm still standing here today. The fire was coming straight towards me, and in your brain, I'm thinking, where's it going? Where's this thing gonna go? The fire came right there and stopped in front of my stomach, and then it licked like water. I, it felt like water, it, it licked. It went into me, and when it went into me, it hit into the innermost part when the Bible says out of your innermost being will flow rivers. For the first time, I felt where my innermost being was. It's like really deep down there. It's deeper than you can ever imagine. And it hit me, and when it hit me, I began to groan in the deepest of tongues. This is not your prayer language. This is diverse kind of tongues. And I spoke in that heavenly language, which I knew there was an interpretation coming. I wasn't going to wait for it. When God gives it, it comes forth like a river. And so I spoke in the diverse tongue of the heaven. And then out of my mouth, these words came. The end is not yet. The end is not yet. I'm sifting my people. I'm separating the wheat from the tares, the profane from what's holy, and the false from what's real. And I'm purifying my bride because my church is not ready for my coming. But I love them so much. I'm going to get them ready for my coming. And then that even crushed me more. I began to weep. I said, Lord, you love your people too much. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, if you're ready to come, then just take us out of here. Let's get the heaven out of here. Let's get the heaven out of here. But he loves his people. So from that day until this hour, every day I pray, Lord, can you help me love your people? I love people. I always have. But I said, can I love them the way you love them? Because you love them next level. God loves people. So I probably shouldn't say this on live television here, but how many have ever been hot fall with somebody? <laughs> don't, don't sit and look at you. Ach, yeah, what did you say? No, no, be honest now. Who's ever been hot fall? No, 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 let's clown out. Huh? Don't act all religious. You don't know what that means. If you're watching in America, it's not for you. When you are finished with somebody, God says, I will now start where you finish. So don't, that's why you cannot write anybody off and say, God's finished with them. You, you're not God. I said, you're not God. And so I said to the Lord, can you help me love people? I just lost two people left because they heard the word khatpo. <laughs> I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. I love you too. I love you too. He's just going to the toilet. 
<laughs> you know, if I, if I say that in America, they think I'm speaking in tongues. <laughs> and then somebody has to give them the interpretation. And then they sit there and go like a... <laughs> okay, so the Lord loves his people. If I can tell you today how much he loves you, every single one of you, he loves you so much. And you're not alone. You're not by yourself. You're not alone. Somebody said this, I've been rejected, you're rejected. He loves you. And today he's going to wrap his arms around you. And when you walk out of this room today, you're not going to feel like you're alone. You will never feel alone again because you know that he's right there with you and he loves you so much. So I also knew that if you touch the church, you did. I'm talking to government leaders. I'm talking to presidents. I'm talking to uh, governors, mayors, sheriffs. You touch the body of Christ, you might as well go and measure out a coffin for yourself. Somebody said, are you going to do something about it? I'm not going to do anything. You touch the church, God will touch you. Your house will be cut off and be made a dunghill. Do not touch the church of Jesus Christ. Don't touch the body of Christ. If you leave the church alone, it'll be well with you. If you touch the church, your days shall be short on the earth and you'll live your life in total confusion. You do not touch the church. You know, Don and I now been married 41 years, uh, 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 41 years. There's no ways that a month before her wedding that I would say, sweetheart, I love you so much, we're gonna get married, but what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hand you over to five guys and they're gonna have their way with you. They might break your arm, do all kinds of stuff, and, knock your eye out, but I'll still be here on the wedding day to marry you. And that's what people think God does to the church. He, no, 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 he doesn't do any of that. I'm sorry. You, you serve in the wrong God. You don't know my heavenly father. Are you with me? And God, if this discipline needs to be done, God will discipline his people. God will take care of his people. God will correct his people. Are you with me? Amen. And I think the last three years have been a great time of that. How many felt the Lord's been sorting things out the last three years? Okay, and he's getting the church ready. But before Jesus comes for the great harvest of souls, we're sitting in eight billion people on the, on the earth. Jesus is holding for this harvest of souls. So anyway, now the fire, I'm back at the fire, went into me, so I didn't see it anymore. And the way it's felt the last three years, it, it went in me and it never left. Now, I don't see it like I did, but I feel it. So there'd be many times when my staff or people come in, Pastor, what are we going to do? I don't know what to do, but suddenly I feel the fire, and then I know, do this, do this, do this. And that's how we've been running the last three years. The 17th of March now will be a three-year anniversary of the fire that came into the room. So now the fire was gone, but in front of me, I saw the earth. And it was beautiful. It was like I was out in space, looked at the earth. I could see the continents. I see the ocean. Covering the earth was a gauze curtain, which I knew was the fear. It wasn't the virus. It was the fear that gripped the souls of men because people were just stupid. People got totally stupid about it. Like you couldn't even come near people. Family members were separated. They had nobody want to hug anybody. Uh, you couldn't blow a trumpet because if you blew a trumpet, then the spit would go through the air and fall on someone, then they'd drop dead. Uh, and, 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 and nonsense stuff, just like total nonsense. We come from Africa. We got Ebola, we got yellow fever, we got all, all kinds of stuff all the time. And yet people are living. And, and this thing is less contagious. And I don't want to get into the whole thing. I mean, I got all the stuff. I've, I've written books on the, on the thing. And what people said was science was not science. It was fabricated nonsense. Are you with me? It was a design plan to lock the planet down and for the devil to have his way. But he failed. He failed. He failed. He failed. He failed. In, he failed in Cape Town. He failed in South Africa. He failed. He's failing in Europe right now. He's failing in North America right now. He's failing in the kingdoms of the earth. You say, why? Because God's not done with the earth yet. 
God's not finished with the earth yet. And so I'm shaking. And I knew this was fear that locked everything. The fear was like you couldn't even go to a restaurant. How many remember that? If you went to a restaurant, you had to wear a mask. Isn't that right? But when you got to your table, you could take it off. <laughs> no, no, because the virus was so AI that the virus knew, no, no, he's eating. Leave him, leave him alone. He's fine. He's fine. He's okay. It's okay. He's eating. Don't attack him yet. When he stands up to go to the toilet, to kill him. <laughs> if he doesn't have a mask on. There, there were parliamentarians in Australia voting to get a mask for your rear end because, no, I'm not making this up. They said if you pass gas, you could spread the disease. <laughs> so then you would have to have one here and one here. Some of you look at me like I'm making it up. I'm not making it up. These are educated people. Let's see it, Aki. So you're telling me when I sit down, eat food, it's fine. So that means if you're a little midget, you, you do well because you're under the virus line. And if you're seven foot six, you're fine because you're above it. Because this is so intelligent. The service is limited to 50 people. If you're 49 and 50, you're safe. If you're number 51, you can frack. No, sorry, sir, you're 51. Can't do it. The curfew, if, if, you, if the curfew is nine o'clock, at 8.59, you're safe, you're fine, but 901, is do it. Very intelligent, this virus. <laughs> so the fear, that's what I saw across the earth, it was like a gauze curtain. I could see the continents, the oceans through it, but I knew it was the fear that gripped the souls of men. Families were split apart, nobody would go to birthday parties. I mean, nonsense, like rubbish. People died alone. They couldn't even say goodbye to their loved ones in the greatest hoax perpetrated on humanity by wicked individuals who want to reduce the population and they are so under the control of Lucifer that they care nothing for humanity. But by the power of God, we hold them back. By the power of God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, they are not gonna be able to do what they want to do. And I was shaking and my hand went like this and moved the curtain off and I heard these words and the Lord said, and I, the Lord your God, will do this work and I don't care who's in the White House and I don't care who is in this agency or that. He said, I don't care who. Who's the agency? The who? The who? We don't follow the who, we follow Jesus. They're still trying to find out who. We follow Jesus, we follow King Jesus, we follow the Word of God. God's Word is number one authority in our life. Can you say amen? And we will never bow. We will never bow. They can burn us, but we will never bow. We'll be like the three Hebrew children. They can throw us into the, fire, into the furnace. So they wanted to make an example out of me and they, they arrest me, but I was already prepared because of what took place. I could not speak. I said, I said to my friend, can't talk now, we'll call later. I hung up. Adonica came and stood by the side of the bed. I said, did you record that? We were both weeping. Our lives were shaken to the core. And that's how the last three years have played out. Now, let me ask you a question, because I'm really here to cast a 36-month vision for the body of Christ here. Somebody said, I don't want you casting my vision. That's fine, then you cast your own vision. I've heard from heaven, so if you want to hear this, this vision's for everybody that will grab a hold of what God's doing. Somebody said, yeah, but then what about after 36 months? Don't worry about it. We'll deal with it that when, when it comes. 
But how many think that God can do something in the next 36 months in your life, in your home, in your marriage, in your children, in your grandchildren, in your business, in your company, in your ministry, in your church, in whatever you do, that God can do something in the next 36 months. Then get ready for what God's about to do here. Because out of this meeting will come an acceleration. You say, how can you promise me that? Because that's what happened to us. From that day, everything began to accelerate. From the day I got arrested, everything accelerated. And I've never seen, we had 70 full-time staff and we now 152 staff. I mean, everything exploded. In the, there's no reason for it. it. There's absolutely no reason for what took place other than it's the hand of God. The church we were at 4,200 members. We're over 5,000, 5,200 right now. Now, some of these well, shouldn't it be bigger. We make it very hard for people to come. They have to, they have to get an ID. They have to register. They have to wear a band because people were coming into our church trying to get our people sick so they could say that we were some kind of a cluster. And so I had to protect the people. We, we had to spend $100,000 a month just on security on our property because people were coming to try to kill us, blow up the church. And I'm not worried for me. I don't care about me, but I will protect the church. I'm going to protect the body of Christ and I'll protect the congregation so that no, nothing can go wrong with them when they come to worship. Are you with me? That's very important to me. So I've got a little clip before I get to the message. I'm already in the message. Some of you will catch on later that I've already started it. But I'm going to play a little clip of what has happened in the last 1,000 days. Because I want to talk to you about what God's going to do with you in the next 1,000 days. Because you say, why, Pastor? Because without a vision, the people perish. If you are just living in a place of survival right now, you're not doing what God calls you to do. Somebody said, I feel like I'm just surviving. If you will take it, even in the midst of your pain, even in the midst of sickness, even in the midst of an attack of the enemy, and flip it around on his head and say, as long as I have breath in my lungs, the devil's going to pay, and I'm going to wreak havoc in his kingdom. God will bless you beyond measure. You listen to what I'm telling you right now. Listen to what I'm telling you right now. So let me show you what happened in 1,000 days. Roll the clip, please. This just in, a uh, Tampa Bay pastor has been arrested. The now Florida pastor is under arrest. A defiant Florida pastor arrested. We stand for other people around the world that cannot stand for freedom and, and, and the gospel and worship freedom. And that's why we make the stand.
by the fire of Pentecost. With the holy boldness upon your life. None of this is the hand of man, but the hand of the Lord. That's our new sanctuary. What can God do in a thousand days? When God comes by his hand and he springs upon it, and the wind blows and the fire falls, in a thousand days God can do what has it been done. I was supposed to be there last night to celebrate, but I'm happy I'm in, I'm in Cape Town with you. And Adonica, Adonica will tell you, and I'm not making this up, I'd sit down to eat my food and I would begin to pray and then I'd say, Lord, bless my brothers and sisters in places where they don't even have food. And I'd start weeping, just weeping at the, at the dinner table many, many days. So I don't take lightly what's taking place. I'm not here because I think I'm the greatest whatever. I, firstly, I never felt eligible for anything that God's done in the ministry. I was just drunk enough when he said do it, I wanted to do it. And so, you know, I... I'm here by accident, really. I'm probably not the first person the Lord asked to do any of this stuff. I'm probably number six or seven, you know. But I'm just drunk enough to go do it. Okay, Lord, I'll do it. And um, thank God for the new wine, because really, the new wine makes you think you can do a lot more than you ever think you can. But, and it's not about money or anything. I didn't come even to Cape Town. We'll give you an opportunity to sow seed at the end, but I didn't come here for your money. 18, and, uh, 18 to one, you don't go to places for money. You must be... Uh, smoking bad weed to go trying to, you know. And I paid for, we paid for everything. Everything's paid. So we, there's no debt, there's no budget, whatever. I, I, prayed, I paid for all of this before we even got here. It's all done. Pastor Carl, tell you. So everything's paid. So uh, what you sow here today will go towards the other cities because we feel God told us to come back. In September, I'm going to do Gaborone. I'm going to do Bulawayo. We're, we're actually where Sardonica was born. And there's some other key places across Africa that we're going to hit. We'll see where the Lord wants us to go. But, and it's not about the money, but I will tell you this, that in three years, over $100 million came into our ministry. Which, which... On an average year, listen, in an average year was 10. So in other words, in three years, we saw 10 years. And in three years, we've sown $20 million to other ministries around the world. Plus, we paid cash for everything and paid cash for the new big arena and the auditorium. It's all supernatural. I actually stand, my pastors, well, Pastor Eric's been with me 26 years. We have never seen anything like the last three years. There's nothing to even compare it to. And I haven't even left the house. We still do this at the house, and we stay at the church. All of that's happening on the property. So it's very hard to even go anywhere because everything's happening there. This revival, it, it, the church is in revival. It's, it's, it's like a fire. It's hard for me to go be Sunday somewhere in some dead place when I've got a live place back home. Why would I want to torture myself with that? So I'm not making this up, people. It's, it's supernatural. My wife, I'll tell you, we've never seen anything like this in our life. We don't even know how to even put it into words. But that's the acceleration that the Lord has done. And it's for this hour and this purpose. Now you say, but Pastor Ken, that happened to me. It's got nothing to do with where you live. Somebody said, well, that's only in America. No, there are major ministries shutting down. There are whole churches closed in America. There are people out of the ministry. There's major ministries that once rode the crest of the wave. They said, we don't have any money. I promise you right now. But God is raising up a new, somebody said, yeah, but you've been a long time in it. You can be a long time in it, but you can, God can renew you like an eagle. Are you with me? 
If it wasn't for the Holy Ghost, I would be a statistic right now. And I would have been somebody that just lived back in the 90s. We are in the greatest move of God ever in the history of our ministry right now. There is nothing to compare it. I know people talk about the 90s. I would not go back to the 90s for anything the world has to offer. This is the greatest move of God that's happening in the earth and it's taking place right now. And, and somebody said, well, how do I hook into it? You can hook into it right now. You can just open your heart and say, Lord, do a work on the inside of me and God will come. There's this 4,000 ladies registered for the ladies conference coming up here in just two weeks. We have no words. This camp meeting, 50, 50 states and 40 foreign countries with the, at the camp meeting, over 8,000 people. Stuff's happening, people. And I'm telling you, God wants to do that in every town, every city, everywhere you are. Just, it's got to do with the fire. The fire must come on the inside of you. That's why don't leave this room till the fire. I know we've got till two o'clock, huh? We've got to two o'clock, do we? Okay, it's only 12.30, so I've got, one day. huh? What? What's the time now? We only got to 1.30? Huh? Who said? Okay. No, I'm only here now. We, 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 this is it. You know, so I, I, I gotta, I gotta do this. There's several things have to happen here this morning. Amen. Take your Bibles and open to the Book of Acts, chapter 19. And I think I'm going to walk down there. I think I'm coming down there. I can't stay up there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is fine. Amen. Yeah, this is better. That's why I like to walk down. Acts 19. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul went through the upper inland districts and came down to Ephesus. And there he found some disciples. Everybody say some disciples. How many have ever found some? I travel around the world, I always find some. He asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed on Jesus the Christ? And they said, no, we've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. How many know that the people on the earth today, they, they saved, but they never heard there was a Holy Spirit? They think the Holy Spirit is a dove. They said, Dave. But the Holy Spirit's not a dove. He's like a dove, but he's not a dove. He asked, into what baptism were you baptized? They said, John's baptism. And Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, continued telling people that they should believe in the one who was to come after him, that is in Jesus, having a conviction of full of joyful trust that he is Christ the Messiah and him being obedient to him. And on hearing this, they were baptized again, this time in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then Paul laid his hands upon them and the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So, he laid his hands. That's why we do lay on of hands. Then they tell you, you can't lay hands on people. Uh, my Bible tells me to. So I'm going to lay my hands on people. Well, then you're going to get arrested. I don't need that down here. You can bring it now. See, you did all the effort. Bring, bring it over here. We're going to have to move it again when I give a call. <laughs> so, 
they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. That's why the devil is attacking the move of God. Now, let me just tell you what's happening in America. I don't know what's happening in South Africa, but I'll tell you what's happening in America. The Southern Baptist Convention, the top leaders went to the World Economic Forum in Davos. And they came back and at their national convention in California, they came out against three things. And I'm telling you what they're gonna be attacking. You can write this down. By the World Economic Forum wants this removed from the church. Because if the church loses these three things, they have no way to stop the church. The first thing they want attacked is tongues. They don't want tongues in the church because the church prays them with a the power that they can't intercept. This is what they said publicly. If you speak in tongues, you're a cult. And that's coming from the head of the Southern Baptist Convention. Number two, healing and miracles. If you flow in healing and miracles, you are a cult. And then number three, prosperity. If you believe in prosperity, you're a cult because they don't want the church to have money, they don't want the church well, and they don't want the church praying with power. So we in Tampa are overboard on tongues, overboard on healing and laying hands on the sick, and overboard on blessing and provision and prosperity. Whatever they say they don't want us to do, we doubling up on it. And we will never back down and compromise. So here's Paul with these. He laid his hands on them and the Holy Spirit came upon them and, they, and there was 12 of them, 12. How many people do you need 12? Now, when I say that, immediately people think about the G12, I'm not talking about that. That worked for Colombia. It doesn't work in many places. I'm just letting you know. In actual fact, churches got involved in that. Their whole church is a wreck because one of the 12 collapsed and then the other 12 didn't want to submit. So he went and got another 12 and the whole thing. Because without the Holy Ghost, all you have is a program. God doesn't come and install programs. He comes and everything's run by the fire of the, of the Holy Spirit. And that's the problem. The church always wants to go around and copy what somebody else is doing. Get on your face. Let the fire come on you and God will have, God, you think God doesn't have originals? Every single person in this room is original, but when the fire comes, what is on, side of, on the inside of you will come forth by the Spirit of God. Amen. Are you with me? Well, why would you go copy somebody when you are an original, you just didn't know it because you were beaten into compliance by a group of people that said this is the way it should be done. God knows what needs to be done and you follow the Holy Ghost. Our ministry, we've never tried to copy anybody. We just do, I get up every day and do only what God tells me to do. That's the key. Every single day you get up and only do what heaven tells you to do. Nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else, and God will be with you strong. Can you say amen? amen. Now, so he took 12. These 12, what God's trying to say to us today, you don't need 5,000 people to cause a revival. You just need 12. But these 12 can't be uh, lukewarm. These 12 must be radical on fire. So if you on fire, as you on the branches, and the other tw the 12 that you have are on fire, that's what's going to spread and going to shake a whole region. If over the next 36 months, and, and here's another thing, people, well, that's my territory. They're coming into my territory. What's the population here in, in the Cape Town, the greater Cape Town area? What's the population right now? Huh? Six million. There's not enough churches to house six million people. So we did, it's my area. No, you are not. God never does that. You're not the Pope. You are not the Pope. He's a Pope all year, isn't he a Pope now? I'm sorry. It is by a yammer. My prati varate. I'm sorry. It is Yama. There's people assigned to you that nobody can reach. There's people that God's going to use and reach. Somebody else can. So if somebody, we've helped, we've helped 172 churches in Tampa fill up. I'm not upset by somebody else's church because what I do is different than what they do. They, they can start a church next door. It doesn't bother me. 
We, yeah, we were the family of God. Amen. Amen. Well, I get, I get net 20 scarpa. Then look after the scarpa that you have and stop trying to grab somebody else's scarp. Say amen. So now think about this. This is Paul, the great apostle Paul, who saw Jesus on the road to Damascus. He's got 12 people. You'd think, come on, man, you should have thousands. He had 12, 12, okay? He went in the synagogue for three months, spoke boldly. Everybody say boldly. You have to be bold. And that can only come with the fire of God. If you try to be bold without the fire, you'll be arrogant. And if you're arrogant, it's not going to be good. Bold. Everybody say bold. I didn't say bold. <laughs> Just <easy. laughs> Say bold. Boldly persuading. You have to be persuasive as a believer. And unfortunately, we live in this politically correct hour where nobody wants to be persuasive. Nobody want, everybody doesn't want to offend. They don't want to make anybody unhappy. We just yet to be liked. If that was the case, Jesus would never have been accepted because there are people even saying today that Jesus' words were harsh. And they're trying to say that, well, the gospels are under the old covenant. We should not follow the words of Jesus. Can you believe that people are actually telling people that today? Are you out of your mind? See, from your cop off, is more. How do you say that Jesus was harsh and that he, I, I can't believe it. My, my, I'm speechless. How do you attack the head of the church, the Lord Jesus Christ, by saying that the gospels are irrelevant today? You're serving another God. You're not serving my Jesus. I've read the gospels. I love the gospels. I don't find anything wrong in the Gospels. Yes. I think they're great. <laughs> they, they, the ministry of Jesus. I love the ministry of Jesus. I love everything he did and everything he said. Amen. And I'm sure I'm not going to be saying, now, Lord, you should have changed that. You probably shouldn't have said that. No, they're trying to make room for everything. The devil wants accommodate everything. You know, don't ruffle feathers. Don't make people mad. I'm not yet to be liked. I'm not yet to be liked. We get to get a job done. What are you going to build? 57 genders bathrooms? I'm just asking. 57 genders? At our church in Tampa, we got two. One with spout, one without. Amen, that's it. That's it. If you with a spout goes into one without, we'll chop it off and you'll be without. Amen. We're not yet to be liked. We're not yet to be accepted. We're yet to preach. Boldly persuading and arguing. Somebody said, I don't want to argue. Then know what the word says so you can argue intelligently. You know what the scripture says. Somebody talks rubbish, say, that's rubbish. That's not even in the Bible. That's from the first book of imaginations. We're not allowing that around here. That's not what the Bible says. God hasn't changed because we're in the 21st century. God, God's word is the same as it was in 1960, as it was in 1800, as it was in the 1500, as it was in the year 100. It's the same in 2023. It has not changed and never will change. Ever. Ever. So Paul is speaking boldly, persuading, arguing, and pleading. Somebody said, I'm tired of pleading. That's your job. Now, how many know that after that, all heaven broke loose and they had a mighty revival? How many know that? Okay, sorry. That actually didn't happen. <laughs> I know because it did ultimately happen, but it did not happen after that because all hell broke loose. Because the Bible says he did that for three months. You would expect if Paul was speaking to a group of 12 people for three months, all heaven would break loose. In actual fact, all hell broke loose because some became more and more stubborn. 
How many have dealt with some people who have become stubborn near the last three years? Huh? Hardened, unbelieving, discrediting and reviling and speaking evil of the way of the Lord before the congregation. How many have found that out? Huh? Speaking evil of the way, what did he do? He separated himself, taking disciples with him and went on holding daily discussions in the lecture room of Tyrannus from 10 o'clock until three. And you tell me I've only got to two o'clock. We started at 10, it's 10 till three. What's the problem here? I need the extra, I'll pay everything. I'll pay more, I'll give them more. I'll give them danger pay. Time and a half pay, I'm in. No, no, I'm not gonna go to three, but I wanna just finish what the Lord's called me to do here this morning service. So he did that daily for two years. Two years of concentration in a place causes the breakthrough to take place. How, do, how can you say that? Because that's what's just happened to us in Tampa. For the last three years, we've been focused on the city of Tampa. Before, I would fly in on a Saturday afternoon and preach Sunday morning and then go out. And there were many years in the church where I looked at the church and I was not happy with the church. I turned to look at Pastor Eric and say, just get me out of here. Because there were things that were happening, people working in areas of ministry that were not doing anything that I wanted done. There were songs being sung I didn't like. There were things being done I didn't like, but I was too tired to even deal with it and just say, just get me on a plane, get me out of here. But the last three years, I realized I wasn't going anywhere. So now I'm changing everything. I started with the three to fives with the children. We went from three to five, six to twelves, went all through the youth. We went through the whole university. I changed, put the curriculum back to the way it was when we started the university 25 years earlier because a lot of people come and then over the years things start changing. And I said, well, I pulled all the music guys together. We'll never sing that song again. I said, we've been singing for 15 years. I know, I don't like it. Get it off the thing. And so for three years, we started to focus all our attention on the city of Tampa. Things are about to break loose. Even in the month of April, when I get back, there's things our church doesn't even know of what's taking place. Like even in the high schools now, we're hitting 29 high schools. More children in the high schools are being saved in our county than any other county in the whole of America put together because of the target of what we've been creating with the engine room of the souls. And now God just opened up all the middle schools for us and the universities. This has all just happened, which I'm going to unveil the plan for that. So when you take your church, you, you put a map up, blow a map up on the wall and you put a compass in and you put a one mile radius and you say, but by God's help and by God's grace, in the next three years, we're gonna hit every house, every home, every business in this one mile circle. And then you go to two miles. We already went over 17 miles, 20 miles. And now we come back into the circle because the people move and things have all changed. But we've got churches that have sprung up all over from Sarasota, all the way down to Fort Myers, Naples, even into Miami and churches all the way up the coast from Lauderdale up to Jacksonville, up in the Panhandle, going all the way up and into Central Florida. We have six churches across Orlando. Now, could have I made them campuses? Yes. Could have I put screens there? Yes. But I feel a church should have a pastor and they should be able to look you in the face and see you in the eyes and you need to see them. That's why I walk around so I can come and look at people. I like to walk around and come stand and look at people. And if they've got dark glasses on, I come pull the dark glasses off. If you're a farmer, you go inspect the flocks. If, you, if you've got cattle, I have 40 cows. My cattle herd is growing now. You walk on the field, you look, you go, there's something wrong with that cow. You can see it. I walk into church, I look, there's something wrong with that lady. You can see it. You, they, can, they, they can say, hallelujah, hallelujah, but you can see something's wrong. So even if the cow, you can see something's wrong. I've got sheep. I have sheep. I guess a boot. I've got sheep. And you can walk out and look at something's wrong with that sheep. They can still go, something's wrong. <laughs> there are churches in America, what they call mega churches, which whatever. The place is never packed. There's always a thousand people per service. I don't know why they just don't have one proper service. You know what I mean? But they've got, we got seven services over the weekend. You go there, I wouldn't even wake up for one of them. 
is like a rush in and out, like a dry cleaning service. Three hymns, three hers, take up the offertory, brief from the Encyclopedia Botanica, the Reader's Digest, and then they pronounce the last rites and they go home just as dead as what they came. <laughs> oh, no, the people won't sit. What do you mean? Go, go down to the beachfront. Go, go down to whatever, the waterfront. See how late people sit at night. And re- they were singing in bars last night. They're making a noise everywhere. People, what are you talking about? Go, go, go. Church? One hour church? What's one hour church? What is that? What is that? It's not church. The pastor, skinny jeans, soy latte, drinking pay, sitting on a bar stool, chatting for 22 minutes. Now this is going to change your life. What? What is going to change your life? Talking on time management. If you want a time management course, go get it. Church should be what the Word of God is saying, what the Holy Ghost wants done. Somebody said, well, they won't sit for hours. They do in Tampa. They do in Tampa. Our service starts at 9.30 on a Sunday morning and we finish at 1.30, sometimes quarter to two. Yeah, but you'd have more people. We, we don't have room to put the people now. Well, you'd have more if you shorten the service. Then I would leave the church. Then I'm out. Then I'm gone. <laughs> it goes back here. I'm gone now. Somebody said, what's happened to Pastor Roddy? He's leaving now. No, I've got, I got better things to do. I live an hour away. It takes me an hour to get to church. Why would I go to church for one hour? If you go to a nice restaurant, how many sit for hours talking to people? Huh? Okay, three people, you do that. You need to get out a little bit more. At least believe God to get out just a little bit more. So... This continued for two years. If you would take the next two years, now I'm going to add another year. If you would take the next 36 months and put a concerted effort onto what God 